Yo, oh, what's up everybody, Durag back with another video and today we're breaking down the Utah Jazz. The Jazz have actually been remarkably consistent all season. There's been very little difference between their pre and post All-Star game splits, so let's take a look at a few key stats. They're turning the ball over just 14% of the time, they have an effective field goal percentage of 56.7% on the season, and they're holding their opponents to an effective field goal percentage of 50.3. So they're shooting about 6% better per game than their opponent. This is the number one team in the league, but there's a few reasons why people are not 100% afraid of the Jazz in a seven game series. Let's dive a little bit deeper into the stats. A key stat for this Utah team is their below average success from mid range. For comparison, from 15 to 19 feet, the Jazz are shooting 36% from this range, while the Phoenix Suns are shooting 49% from 15 to 19 feet. That's a 13% difference and a sizable statistical margin. The playoffs often come down to who can score better one-on-one. -on -one. Defenses are locked in on a more possession-by-possession -possession basis, teams are more likely to switch actions, and having a clutch shot maker like Devin Booker and Chris Paul on the same team should prove to be a key difference that could potentially swing a series if we were to match up against Utah. The Jazz actually assists less shots per game than the Suns, even though they are lauded for their ball movement and passing. I thought this was a little interesting uh, caveat. They do rely a lot on Joe Ingles and Donovan Mitchell. Post All-Star break, Donovan Mitchell's been on fire. Over his last eight games, he's shooting a combined 54% on step backs and pull up three point shots, and he's averaging a career high in rebounds and assists this season. The growth of Mitchell's playmaking and decision making on when to shoot and pass have been extremely key to this Utah Jazz season, but he's not the only one who's having a career year. Joe Ingles is second in the league in three point percentage. He's shooting an absurd 48.7% from behind the stripe and a league best 72.4 true shooting percentage. He's basically as good as it gets at creating his own shot and also creating for others. The ideal second slash third cog in a system designed to really get the most out of all of his strengths. As of writing this, the three-man lineup of Mitchell, Gobert, and Ingles are the number one combination for net rating in the entire NBA with more than 250 minutes played. They have a 23.0 net rating while on the court together. The Jazz also as a team have 12 out of the first 25 appearances on this net rating list. The Suns, meanwhile, make their first appearance at number 38 with a 14.8 net rating led by Chris Paul, Mikhail Bridges, and Cam Johnson. So this Utah Jazz team is good all the way around, from the bench to the starters, they can hold it down and play with anybody. Rudy Gobert is the last piece of the puzzle for this team. His presence at the rim on both offense and defense is exactly the type of high-end outcome the Suns are hoping DeAndre Ayton can reach. Gobert is averaging 13 rebounds per game and three blocks per game. Great numbers for a defensive anchor, and we know he's limited on offense. And he does have the potential to get played off the floor in the right matchup, but I don't want to undersell his impact while on the floor. He sets great screens, he rolls extremely hard, and has a large catch radius. His touch is abysmal, but he's still an above average starting center, and a huge reason why this Jazz team is 38 and 11. Not only do they have a presence at the rim, but this Utah team is scary from deep. They lead the league in made threes per game at 17 per game and are second in accuracy at 39.8%. They lack mid-range scoring, but they make up for that from behind the stripe. They just set an NBA record for 18 made threes and a half against the Chicago Bulls. Their best shooters from above the break are Joe Ingles, Mitchell, and Conley. Staples in their rotation, and they all have over 170 attempts from above the break and they're all shooting greater than 40 percent. If we take a look at the Suns, our three best shooters by percentage wise all shooting above 40 percent are Langston Galloway, Torrey Craig, and Cam Payne. If we add all their attempts together, it's only a combined 130 attempts from above the break. So this is a significant strength for the Utah Jazz, almost equal to the Suns strength from mid-range. So statistically speaking, you can see why this team is number one in the league. They have great complementary lineups, a go-to guy in Donovan Mitchell, and multiple key role players and an anchor down low to bring it all together. But do they have the will to win like a Devin Booker and a Chris Paul? The first matchup of the season went to the Suns, and we'll look to take them down again this Wednesday on April 7th in Phoenix. That's it for this Utah Jazz breakdown. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below what you expect from this Suns team when they face the Jazz on Wednesday. 
until next time, do rag out.